it's interesting because obviously I'm a Christian like later in life and stuff who could possibly believe that they have no sin actually me right even myself before I became Christian I thought I was all right welcome to the Bible in one year podcast brought to you by two Brits and a Bible today is day 358 covering first John 1 2 3 4 and 5 Um, so apologies, I got a little bit carried away by saying we were doing all the minor books of John. Just one John today, the rest tomorrow. Um, so this book written by John the Apostle, although it was technically anonymous, people were just like, no, no, he wrote this one. So yeah, um, between AD 85 and AD 90, while John lived in Ephesus, after he wrote his gospel. And the purpose of it was summed up so well in this Africa Bible, I was just like, I'm just gonna have to read it out. It's fairly long, but it just wrote it and explained it so well. Dangerous false teachings about Christ had arisen in the first century church and was threatening the life of the new community. This teaching, characteristic of Gnosticism, G-N-O-S-T, Gnosticism. Gnosticism, yeah, the Gnostics. Okay. Um, Claims that the spirit which is good is separate from the body which is evil. Separating the spirit from the body encouraged the belief that Jesus, human, could not be the Christ, divine, and so the soul or spirit could not be affected by sin, the body. This promoted immoral behavior because some saw no moral relationship between the soul and the body. This heresy also caused them to deny the humanity and deity of Jesus Christ. Because of this, many people sought salvation in a form of special knowledge, not through faith in Christ Jesus. So John wrote this basically to try and combat some of that false teaching. But I thought that wow. explained it in a way that I couldn't try and short form without sounding like a moron. Love that, dude. That's awesome. Um, that's really interesting. And I've heard of like Gnostics and the Gnostic Bible and Gnosticism and stuff, but I didn't know that that was a belief, a heretical belief they held. So really, really interesting. That's going to that's going to add some stuff, I think, to my readings of some of these verses as well. So We'll start with 1 John 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So this is such a simple way of understanding God, really, right? So God is pure light, pure truth, pure purity. So any sin, any darkness is simply a deprivation of God, a deprivation of God's qualities, right? You've probably heard that before. I think this was probably in one of the Bible in a Year videos at some point. Mm-hmm. That's such a simple way of saying it, right? So God is light. He's not just kind of like light. He literally is light. And anything that has some darkness in it cannot be God. Yeah. Uh, so I really like the way the video explained it of like God is the sun. Jesus is like the rays of the sun. It's what it enables the sun to be visible. Basically. Yeah. Love that. Fantastic way of doing it. I was saying it. Um, then First John 1, 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So there's a couple of things here. One is based on what you just said, actually. So obviously these Gnostics thinking that because the stuff they do with their body doesn't equate to sin in their spirit, he's arguing against that immediately, right? Like, look, you are with sin. You can't claim not to be. So that's really cool to know that now from your intro. Mm -hmm. But two, it's interesting because obviously I'm a Christian like later in life and stuff who could possibly believe that they have no sin. Actually me, right. Even myself before I became Christian, I thought I was all right. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm an okay guy. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not the bad guy or whatever. I'm not, if someone was like, are you a sinner? I'd be like, no, I don't think I'm a sinner. Right. Because that veil was over me. I didn't know. Yeah. So so there you go. Bro, keep on at it, dude. I'm not got main points. (laughs) Just start the whole thing. We'll we'll do a new thing where like I do the first half, you do the second. Um, Okay. So then first John two, verse 22, all the twos. Who's the liar? It's whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. So, yes, in Revelation that we're going to cover soon, there is like a an Antichrist figure. But there are also many Antichrists in that they deny Christ. So they are against Christ. Right. Yeah. And it's sort of wrong to believe that there's just going to be this one Antichrist and everyone else is not. It's like, no, actually, there are going to be millions, if not billions of Antichrists. That is to say, people who are against God. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you don't have to actively be actively be against God, but just by denying His existence, you are not with God. So exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're against me. Exactly. Um, all right, I might have a little turn now. Um, 
1 John 3.18, not to be confused with John 3.16. Dear <laughs> children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Boom. Just love that. It's kind of another Bible in one verse to an extent. It was one of our mantras, one of a better term in Uganda as well. I have that written in there. So, yeah, it's just pretty banging on that front. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm just going to keep going unless you have a point that you want to jump in on. Shut me up. Uh, uh, so 1 John 4 verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This kind of reminds me of I mentioned the other day, the uh, South African dude that just started following us. He had a little video on his channel where it was saying that in the Old Testament, um, where Moses and Aaron performed signs, Pharaoh's wise men performed signs as well. And it's like the presence of miracles isn't enough by itself to prove sort of Jesus. And we can take that in today's day and age as well, where people might sort of perform miracles and healings and stuff doesn't mean it's all from Jesus. We need to weigh it up because we need to test the spirits to see if they're from God. There are many false prophets in the world and yeah. we have to use our discernment to, to check that. That's good. And that also is very relevant to Revelation, right? Because there are going to be many fake signs, fake wonders, fake this, fake that, fake news, basically. So we've got to be very careful. Of that. Really good, mate. Indeedy. Um, four verse four, the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Doesn't need much more explaining. And it's just something that we need to stay true to when we're going through times of difficulty that actually, you know what, I'm ever I'm going through. God who's in me is greater than anything going on in the world. Amen. Absolutely. I've got no, one point I, left, so I just keep going and keep going. Shoot your shot. Go for it. Um, 1 John 5, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He always hears us. I think, bottom line, doesn't yeah. matter what we're spouting, he always hears us. But if we're <laughs> asking for things, if it's in accordance with his will, that's when it will become true. If we're asking him to win the lottery, if we're asking him that, you know, West Ham win a game for a change, if we're asking him whatever, only if it's according to his will, will it actually come to pass, I suppose. And that's where our relationship with him is so key, because the more you know someone, the more you know their will and you know the way they're going to act. And, you know, your kids get to know your personality and they're not going to ask for the stupid things because they know you're going to say no. So yeah. they learn that personality and that's what we need to be doing with God. We need to have confidence approaching him. We mentioned a few weeks ago about approaching him as a dad, as a loving father with that freedom and openness, but it has to be asking according to his will. Love that dude. Yeah. So I, I've got a couple minutes to go with a couple more of, the, of my non bold points, but I just want to start with first John five verse 12. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. For me, that's a Bible in one verse again, the mm -hmm. B I O um, B. And then I'm just trying to sort of select. I've got so many points are beyond that. Um, I quite like the the way that First Peter talks about sin. So let's combine a couple of. Things. So three verse nine, no will continue to sin because God has seen they cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. So that links to when Jesus talks about, look, if, you, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, pluck out your eye, whatever, which takes him very seriously if we're saved, which these bloody Gnostics weren't, were they? Yeah. And then uh, 3.24, the one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So as much as not wanting to sin, you're convicted of that sin, guided away from that sin. So if, you know, like me in the past, you're worried whether you're saved or not right now, just remember, if if you're on a journey with God, you're sincerely trying to turn from your sins to get better, and you see any signs of root that you're actually turning away from your old life, that's a very good indication that you have Holy Spirit. And I would go even as far as to say, if you're worried whether you're saved or not, that to me suggests more likely you are saved because you're convicted and want to spend your eternity with Jesus, not the plan B, which is not so good um yeah yeah Cheers, mate. so let's do a let's do a proper ending again we've only got a few more episodes to do that i'll try and get it right this time uh thank what do i even say um tomorrow's readings are two john three john and jude so why don't you beautiful people pick up your bibles and get reading 
In the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at Two Brits in the Bible. And hey, why don't you like or share this to help spread the word of God? Cheers.